All right, good morning. Hopefully you are up. Hopefully you're not watching this in bed in your pajamas still, but you got up and you brushed your teeth and uh, that, that would be good. Um, so get your breakfast. You can even watch this while you're eating breakfast, however you wanna do it will be great. So um, anyway, welcome to Beth Haven Baptist Church team class this morning. Um, just a couple starting things out. Uh, with the coronavirus, it's a little bit different than uh, our typical service, So, uh, but hopefully you can stay engaged and hopefully you'll learn something this morning that we can apply to our lives. Um, so a couple updates really quickly. Uh, we're going to be doing some virtual activities for teen, for teen class uh, that we'll do maybe throughout the week, and then also we'll do some in-person activities as well. So um, if you could help me out, go ahead this week, get Google Hangouts if you haven't don't have that already. Um, you, if you have a Gmail account, it's pretty easy to get that set up. Um, and we'll try to do it on there. That way everyone can see each other and uh, we can play some games and do some fun stuff with that. Um, so talk to your parents, get that thing set up. Um, hopefully we can have something going for next Saturday. So uh, I'll keep you up to date on that. And then uh, the other thing, uh, pastor's gonna have a question and answer time, not tonight, um, which is the 22nd, uh, but it will be the 29th, so next week. So if you have questions for pastor, maybe you've been reading your Bible, hopefully you have been, uh, but you've been reading, maybe you have a question from something you're reading on and you want to ask him that. If you get it into him by this Friday, um, you can turn it into Miss Sarah at the church office, um, then she can get your questions questions to him, and you can get those questions answered next Sunday night. So we're going to go ahead and go to the Lord in a word of prayer and uh, ask his blessing on today's uh, lesson. And so we'll, we'll do that, and then we'll get rolling today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for all that you do for us. God, just thank you for another day that we can serve you, God, that we can um, fellowship with one another, Lord. Um, hopefully they're, they're in their small groups. Um, there's other teenagers they can fellowship with. And so God, I just want to thank you so much for your word and the encouragement that it is to us. Um, it is a different time that we're in, um, that we're doing things virtually due to the coronavirus. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would just help uh, keep everyone safe. Um, but, God, I pray that you'd help us to just be drawn closer to you, Lord, that we would grow spiritually. Um, and, God, I pray that you would just help us just to continue to be engaged one another. And uh, so, God, I pray you be with each one of our students, Lord, um, that you just be with them for in, in health, uh, also with school uncertainty, Lord. Uh, be with their parents and their financial situations and jobs, Lord. I uh, just pray that you just bless them. And um, God, I pray you be with our church. Uh, it's an exciting time here. And so, Lord, I pray that you just help us to um, just to be filled with your spirit, Lord, that we would just be prayed up, Lord, and studied up, God. Um, and just, it's a, it's a great opportunity that we can reach others, Lord, uh, because you allow things in our life for the furtherance of the gospel. And so, God, I just pray that you just be with each one of our members in our church. Uh, be with our country, Lord. Be with our leaders as they uh, try to direct us the best that they can um, with wise choices, God. So I just pray that you'd give them wisdom. Um, and Lord, also that you just be with our class. And so God, I pray that you would just be with us, Lord, that we would just continue to be interactive with one another, Lord, um, that our relationships would continue to be strong, Lord, and that our relationship with you uh, would grow as well. And so God, I pray that you just help us as we get with our new uh, program that we're starting tonight or, uh, this morning. Um, God, that you would just help us to, to be able to grow. And so God, I pray that you would just help that to be our heart's desire. And uh, Lord, I ask that you bless the service this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to play a game at this time, uh, Old Test Emoji. And so uh, if you'll go ahead and give, put the instructions up there, um, that way they can see what that's going to be. So really, it's can you name the Old Testament story told by these emojis? So we know that you have, like if you have an angry face, then that's symbolizing that you're angry. Hopefully you don't get angry. But um, anyway, so this is what it looks like. Uh, Charity's back there running everything for me. And so can you guess this Bible story? Go ahead and get those rolling and just stop it whenever you want. All right, so take the next about five to 10 seconds. Try to guess this, uh, those emojis associated with a Bible story. See if you can get what it is. Hopefully this one's pretty easy to start out. All right, show us the answer there. Adam and Eve. Okay, so hopefully you got that. Get the cobwebs out of your mind and get rolling for this next one. All right, so go put the next one up there and get it going. This one's a little bit tougher. What Bible character do you think this one is? All right, stop. Okay, good. All right, so this is an interesting story in the Bible. Uh, hopefully you can put the clues together and figure out what it is. Uh, it takes the next couple seconds to think of it. And don't just let your neighbor do all the, the yelling. You don't have to blurt out the answer, but uh, go ahead. Tell everyone what you think your answer is. Hey, look at that. It's Jonah. Awesome. 
All right, good, good. Hopefully you're two for two this morning. If not, we still have a couple more you can get in on it. So, all right, go ahead and get the next one. All right, stop. Okay, this one's so easy, my mom could do it. Probably even my grandma too. So hopefully you can get this one. Do you know what story this is? This does not have anything to do with Oklahoma City Thunder, okay. The Ten Commandments, awesome. Hopefully you got that one, it wasn't Nine Commandments. You know what all those are. Good, all right, so hopefully you're three for three. Go ahead and give the next one up there. Okay, this one might be a little bit more difficult, but hopefully you can get it. Go ahead, think about it for a second, and look over to the person to your right and tell them what you think it is. Don't whisper in like a creepy way, but just like tell them, all right? Hopefully you brush your teeth and your breath doesn't stink. All right, what's the answer? Moses and the burning bush. I don't know if that's exactly the pigment of Moses' skin, but we'll go with it, so. All right, another one here. So this one, we're, whenever we get it going, once she stops, whoever can blurt it out the fastest, tell me, and I will give you a pat on your back. So this one's pretty, this is for like all the brownie points here. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. Those dogs are pretty cute, just saying. All right, take the next couple of seconds. Hopefully you blurted it out already on this one. Um, remember, to let me know. You can text me or text Miss Charity and let us know. All right, what's the answer? Noah's Ark. It looked like that cruise liner, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, all right, what's the next one? We have a couple left, so hopefully you're getting in on the game now. It's a little bit more difficult. Let's see what it is. This one you kind of have to think about. So I'm gonna give you just a couple more seconds that I gave you on the other ones, because this one's a little bit more difficult. It almost looks like a Starts out like looking like a vacation, and then someone got, and maybe it's like a honeymoon, but hopefully you're not milking cows on your honeymoon, so uh, those clues might just throw you off, but. All right, hopefully you know what it is. Go ahead and whisper to, you can yell it loudly, the golden calf. All right, good. I think we might have like, what, one or two more? Oh, we got, we got some more going on. All right, so hopefully you've got all these. Maybe you've missed one, but this one is for you. You got this one. This one's bonus points, okay? Okay, never mind. All right, this one's actually pretty easy. I think everyone can get this one. It's out of Judges, Book of Judges. Just a hint. All right, what's the answer? Samson and Delilah. That was a, that was a tough one. I don't really know. Maybe it was for you, but um, I think it, really the story, it kind of threw you off there because it's a girl getting her hair cut, but it's actually Samson getting his hair cut, so. All right, what is this story? <clears throat> All right, try to try to get this one. Got Statue of Liberty and a crayon crown. This one you should be out. This one, this one. If you put your head, what you what you know and what you don't know together, you'll find out you know what you don't know. So you got this. I believe in you. All right, what do you think the answer is? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you can tell me their names, uh, what their Hebrew names were, then you are just that much more awesome. So go ahead, see if you can say that. All right. Great job. Try to get this next one. You're good. You are good. All right. Any idea what this one is? I know what it is because I know what the answer is. I know what the answers to all of these are, but hopefully you can get it. I just like that emoji at the very end. It's very suspenseful. All right, throw your last answer out before she shows the answer. It is not an emergency room. It is Abraham and Isaac. You got Abraham and I, his son, emergency with a ram, and it was suspenseful. Okay, good. All right, try to get this next one. This is the last one. 
you gotta, you gotta end on a good note. So if you haven't got any of these, really focus, get this one down. Just whenever you wanna stop it, go for it. Okay, yeah, this one's very easy. You guys can get this. I know you can. Wake up, take another drink of orange juice, and get this answer. End on a W. I think everybody's already got it, so go ahead and show us the answer. Daniel in the lion's den. You got Daniel three lions at night with the angel. Praising God. All right, good, good, good. So hopefully you got most of those. <clears throat> We're going to get ready to sing a song, and I want everybody to sing. Uh, go ahead and stand up there, and I, I know if you're not singing. So, so hopefully um, you'll just go ahead, stand up, sing at the top of your lungs, make, your neighbor, make sure your neighbors can hear you. Um, so it'll be really, really good. So I got the words up here. Um, really quickly, just an instruction. We'll sing the when I get to having a walk with Jesus. We'll go all the way down through. Be, uh, and I'm so glad I am. Hallelujah. And then uh, we'll go back up to the top where the asterisks are. We'll repeat those things. All right. So here we go. Let's sing it out nice and loud. Don't disappoint your neighbor. All right. Sing out nice and loud. All right. Here we go. When I, <clears throat> Let's go ahead and restart that. I, yeah, let's do that again. <clears throat> When I get to heaven, gonna walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, gonna see his face. When I get to heaven, gonna talk with Jesus. Saved by his wonderful grace. Because I'm safe, safe, saved, wonderfully saved. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm safe, 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 saved, wonderfully saved. And I'm so glad I am. Hallelujah. When I get to heaven, gonna walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, gonna see his face. When I get to heaven, gonna talk with Jesus, saved by his wonderful grace. Good, so we're gonna sing it one more time, uh, as bad as that was, and we're gonna sing it slow motion. I've been told to lower it down a little bit <clears throat> for Kyra, all right? So you can get down and, and, and get those low notes. All right, here we go. We're going to do this one in slow motion in case you haven't woken up at all yet. All right, here we go. When I get to heaven, gonna walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, gonna see his face. When I get to heaven, gonna talk with Jesus. Saved by his wonderful grace. Because I'm saved, 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 wonderfully saved. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved, 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 wonderfully saved, and I'm so glad I am. Hallelujah, slow motion. When I get to heaven, gonna walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, gonna see his face. When I get to heaven, gonna talk with Jesus, saved by his wonderful grace. Good job, have a seat. It's good, if you, can, if you haven't learned to laugh at yourself yet, trust me, you will have plenty of opportunities. So we're gonna go ahead and get into our lesson today. Uh, ABCs of Christian Growth, you will have received by this point um, a binder that has the first couple lessons of our new uh, curriculum. So I'm excited about this. Um, growing spiritually, as that's what we're supposed to be doing. So hopefully uh, you will get into this, that you will uh, really, really seek the Lord on how what you need to grow in. Hopefully you need to grow in a lot of different areas, and we can do that um, over the next several weeks. So we're going to start out today with the uh, lesson, what does salvation mean for me? What does salvation mean for me? Um, a very key statement that I think to get everything going, starting out this morning is the beginning of the Christian life is salvation. And it's just that it is the beginning of the Christian life. It's not an ending point. I think sometimes that's where, I don't know if it just is just a brain deal or something that we, that we struggle with, but sometimes we think, okay, I've been at church, I got saved, I got baptized, and that's where I, I'm done. I'm, I'm, that's all I'm supposed to be doing. And we might come and sit in a pew, come faithfully, but that's kind of where our Christian growth stops. We're, we're going on our way to heaven, and we get satisfied with that. And um, a true Christian shouldn't be satisfied with that. Um, it, it, the Christian life is about growing and getting closer and closer to the Lord. So um, hopefully we can look at a couple areas about what salvation means for us. And maybe if you're not saved this morning, <clears throat> this will be uh, convicting to you, and you'll see your need of salvation and get saved. Um, we'll have some 
and each lesson will have some reading assignments perhaps or some homework deals. Um, so a, little, a couple assignments I think will be a blessing to you. So, so really get involved with this, and I know it'll be a blessing to your life. So uh, we'll start out um, with, uh, I actually have two plants I want to, I'll, I'll bring back over here for you. Uh, these are plants my wife has planted not too long ago. And so uh, hopefully you'll be able to see them. If not, then it's the thought that counts, right? So, um, so kind of I was thinking about our life is like this, pe this little cup of dirt. It's like a, a, a cup with dirt in it. And so um, there's not really anything special about it. I mean, you can find it anywhere in the world, um, except for this particular one's very, very special. And so it's just, got, it's just a little planter with some dirt in it. And uh, there, I mean, there's not really anything going on as far as I can tell. Uh, it's just there. Um, nothing's coming out of it. It might mold eventually, I guess, but um, pretty much it's, it's just there. And uh, so I was thinking, you know, our heart sometimes is like this. We, it has no life in it before we're saved. And then the seed of salvation is put into us once we get saved and, and from which we can grow. And there's a couple things that happen with that. That seed goes into our, into our heart. We get saved. And then we water it with the word of God and it begins to grow. And we have like, this is like a little baby Christian because it's got like a little bitty sprout here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, I mean, there's a little bitty sprout here. Really, really cute, you know, and uh, it'll begin to grow. And I don't really know what this plant is. It could be like a Venus flytrap, which would just be awesome. So maybe if we're, if we consider ourselves different plants spiritually, you know, you're a Venus uh, flytrap uh, or like a sycamore tree or I don't, I don't know what you'd be, but. Um, anyway, I mean, it's, it's, it'd be pretty cool if that was a Venus flytrap, catch some flies on the way through, but, um, anyway, just an interesting thought, a uh, quick example of, you know, what our life is without the Lord. Um, we're just, we're just dirt. I mean, we're not, not really anything to us. And then God gives us salvation, which begins to grow and, um, it's an exciting deal. So, um, hopefully this will be a blessing to you these next couple lessons that we'll go through. So we're going to start out with what does salvation mean to me? And we'll start with that one, uh, what I was. Now, this is kind of the bad news. So I've got some bad news. i got some good news. But I always like to get the bad news first because at least we can end on a positive note. Um, so what I was. And you've got some sheets there that you'll be filling in the blanks. I believe that they're underlined and in red. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to stand out to you. Um, and then we'll be turning to a lot of passages of Scripture. So get your Bibles out and get ready to, to flip through there. So what I was, the first thing we're going to look at is that I was spiritually dead in trespasses and sins. And we're going to start in Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 1, and see what the Bible has to say about salvation and what I was. Because it doesn't matter what my opinion of who I was or what your opinion of who you were before you were saved or maybe in the condition that you're in right now, but what does God have to say about it? What does the Bible have to say about it? And so let's look at Ephesians chapter number two and verse number one. The Bible says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. I have quite a few definitions here. Hopefully we can start out with this basic, this foundation, and we can build and grow on that. But what does it mean to be dead? I mean, it's the opposite of alive. Um, if, if there was a dead body in here, uh, let's say Brother Ethan, who's helping me in the back, if, is out here and he's dead. That would be a, a bad day anyway. But if he's dead and I'm up moving around, there, you could pretty easily tell which one of us are dead and which one of us are alive. And before we're saved, we are spiritually dead in trespasses and sins. A dead person can't do anything. Le left alone, he can't help himself. And so uh, the Bible says that we are spiritually dead in trespasses and sins. The next thing it says is that we are condemned already. Uh, we all pretty much know John 3.16, but the two verses after that, it's got this truth here. John chapter number 3 and verse number 16, or verse number 18. The Bible says, He that believeth on him, talking about Jesus Christ, is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So it says that we were condemned already. We didn't, even, we didn't even have to really do anything. It's what we didn't do. We didn't believe on Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. And so uh, the word condemn means to pronounce to be wrong, pronounce to be guilty or worthless, sentenced to punishment. And that's what, where we were. It wasn't necessarily, it's up for debate on whether we're guilty, whether we are condemned uh, because of our sin, because we're dead spiritually. The Bible says we're condemned already. So I've heard maybe going out on visitation when, when you go out and knock on doors and I've heard people say, well, we'll just, I'm just going to wait until I die and I stand before God and he'll see 
if, and I'll see if I go to heaven. But that's not, I mean, if you do that, I mean, it's not wise because the Bible already gives the answer. It says, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And so why was I condemned? Because I believed not. I didn't believe in Jesus Christ and that he was the Son of God, that he died for me. So because of that, because I'm condemned, I had the wrath of God abiding on me. Now, what does wrath mean? Sometimes we think of like anger uh, or our punishment. Um, but wrath is the, j- the just punishment of an offense or crime. The just punishment of an offense or crime. When I, sometimes when I disobeyed my parents, I got to see their wrath. And that wasn't necessarily a fun thing, but, but I saw the wrath of my parents. Um, the just punishment of an offense or a crime, I got lots of spankings growing up, probably a lot less than I should have gotten. Um, but because we're sinners, because we're dead spiritually, because we're condemned already uh, to God's wrath, um, we had wronged an omnipotent, almighty God. The next thing, uh, moving on here, is I was a servant of sin. I was a servant of sin. In Romans chapter number 6, verse 17, let's go over there together. Romans chapter number 6 and verse number 17. Romans six seventeen. It says, But God be thanked that ye were, past tense, the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. I was the servant of sin. I'm thankful for that past tense word, but maybe you are a servant of sin right now. A servant is just somebody that's in subjection, one who yields obedience to. And uh, I was thinking about, you know, in this light, the servant, um, the servant to, to sin, that servant's way is hard. In Proverbs chapter number 13, verse number 15, it talks about that. The way of the transgressor is hard. And I was thinking about his wage, which we'll get into here in just a minute. I'm talking about God's wrath. Uh, if you look at uh, Romans chapter number 6, verse number 23, we'll, we'll look at it here in just a minute. But that verse says, for the wages of sin is death. The wages, what, what you earn. Uh, it's something that, that you deserve. And this, the servant's way is hard and his wage is hell. So obviously this is a lot of bad, this is a lot of bad news. Um, I'm a servant of sin. I'm in subjection to it. The next thing here, we'll hopefully get to some good news here in just a minute. I was headed for the lake of fire. Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 15. Let's look at that verse together. Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 15. If you just go all the way to the back of the Bible and go back a page, you'll be there. So Revelation chapter number 20, verse number 15, what does the Bible say? It says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I was headed for a lake of fire. This is who I was. So hopefully you've been saved. Hopefully you know the Lord as your Savior. You know you're going your way to heaven. Looking back over these things, man, what a blessing it is. That, what does salvation mean to me? Well, I was spiritually dead. I'm not anymore. I was condemned already, but I'm not anymore. I had God's wrath abiding on me, but not anymore. I was a servant of sin, but I'm not anymore. I was headed for the lake of fire. Now I'm headed for heaven. Whosoever's name isn't written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It wasn't, there's no respecter of persons. Uh, no president's going to get out of this. No ruler, no king is going to get out of this. It is who, whosoever. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There's no exceptions. Everyone is responsible for what he does with Jesus Christ. So um, hopefully you're not in this state anymore headed for the lake of fire. Or this next thing, I was lost yet sought by Jesus. I love the song, Come Thou Fount. It says, Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. Man, what a, what a wonderful truth. I think I, it makes me think back to when, when I was lost. And so many times Jesus Christ would come to me and the Holy Spirit would convict my heart, maybe in a, in a service or just when I was reading my Bible or, or just thinking about eternity. Um, and man, I, God would convict my heart and, and, and convict me to get saved and, and, and prod at me to get saved. But I rejected him over and over again. And yet, even though I was lost, couldn't find, I didn't know how to get to to heaven on my own. I couldn't. It's impossible. But I was lost, but yet Jesus sought me. Uh, That word lost means forfeited, alienated. Um, I I hated when when I used to play baseball as a kid, uh, like in first, second grade, and even in kindergarten. 
and we'd have to forfeit a game because there wasn't enough people there. But it's almost like you have the opportunity to have eternal life and you forfeit that opportunity. You are alienated from the family of God. He came to me and he came to you. And I'm so thankful for that. Uh, it, gets, it gets excited on a Sunday morning. So, man, it, what an amazing truth that even though we were lost, Jesus sought us just like he left the 99 sheep to go after the one. And uh, so anyway, we're going to hopefully get in some good news here. Because without Jesus, we'd have no hopes. But I'm thankful Jesus still came. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is not just who I, what I was, but what God promised to me. And this is the good news. And what is good news? It, that's what the word gospel means, is good news. So let's, let's look at that and see what God has promised that he would do for us. Uh, so the first thing here is the gift of eternal life. The gift of eternal life. Now this is free, it's available, and it's eternal life. Sometimes it's kind of hard for us to wrap our finite minds around eternity because we have a starting point. We'll have an ending point. Everyone before us has had a starting point, any point outside of God. And so for us to think about eternal life, that it never ends. It just keeps going and going and going. Man, what an amazing, it is forever life, never to end. And that's what God has promised us. And God's never broken any of his promises. Uh, look, look at Romans chapter number six, verse 23. We were just there a moment ago. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. What an amazing truth. Let me get over there just make sure I finish that verse correctly. Romans chapter number six, verse number 23. Go ahead and turn your Bibles there. That way you can see it. Don't just take my word for it, but look, let's see what God says about it. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. What an amazing gift. Now, I was thinking about this, just putting it in light of what we were just looking at. We were condemned. We had the wrath, the pun just punishment of an offense or a crime. So the gift of eternal life, sin brings a wage. And that wage is something that we have earned, we've deserved. And we are talking about with that wage, is the wages of sin is death in the same verse. But what about God? God gives a gift, something that's not earned, something that is not deserved. And the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What an amazing gift that God has given to us. Let's look at this next thing. What else did God promise us? He promised us the forgiveness of sins. Excuse me. Uh, let's look over in Colossians chapter number 1 and verse number 14. If someone beside you might not have their Bible this morning, maybe there's a visitor there, just go ahead and lean over and let them uh, look on with you. Uh, Colossians chapter number 1, verse 14. The Bible says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. What does it mean to forgive? Or what does forgiveness mean? It's a pardon. It is remission of an offense or a crime. So if someone had done me wrong, maybe they ran into my car or they came over and sprayed like graffiti all over my house. Hopefully none of you do that because I will know where it came from. Um, but forgiveness would be me pardoning them. It would be me remitting an offense or a crime. And because why can we do that? Not just because forgiveness is just out there, but because Jesus paid our debt redeeming us. He bought us back. He, he gave our pardon to God because of his sacrifice. That's what this verse is saying. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. God has forgiven all of our sins, not just our past sins, not just the sin that I just confessed, but all of our sins, past, present, and future. And that, will, as we'll look into, I think the first letter that we're going to go through in the ABCs of Christian growth is our, the assurance of our salvation. And that, I mean, it ties in with that, that he's forgiven all of our sin, not just our past sins. The, the next thing we'll look at is he has given us salvation brought through his grace. Let's go to Titus chapter number two. Titus chapter number two, the last T book in the uh, New Testament. Titus chapter number two and verse number 11. Titus 2, 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. The grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. I'm thankful that God's grace is unmerited love and favor. It's getting what we don't deserve. It is God, uh, God's riches at Christ's expense. And because of gra the grace of God, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10 says, or 8, 9. <laughs> uh, but man, salvation, God has promised us salvation brought through his grace. Maybe as we're, as we're going through here, maybe God's speaking to your heart. If you're not saved, look at all the promises God has given. Why would you want to stay where you were, what I was? I was spiritually dead. I was condemned already. I was under the wrath of God. I was a servant of sin. I was lost. I was headed for the lake of fire. 
I like this list a lot better. What God has promised for me. And if you're not saved, give me a call. Give Miss Charity a call. Talk to your parents. Talk to the, the, the preacher that's leading the small group there at, at the house or if you're in a different building or something. But man, salvation is what God has promised to us. And we'll talk about how, what, what do we do to get, what, how, what do we do to get saved? Salvation brought through his grace. I, I like this, this next one too. To dwell in my heart. God has promised to dwell in my heart. Uh, look at John chapter number 14, verse number 23. John chapter 14 and verse number uh, 23. And while you're flipping over there, to dwell means to abide as a permanent resident. Not to like just come and then leave and come and leave and come and leave, but to dwell somewhere. For God to come and dwell in our heart is to abide as a permanent resident. Not to just leave and never come back, but he is to dwell to stay permanently. Amazing, amazing thought. Uh, John chapter 14, verse number 23, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me and he will keep my, or he will keep my words. So not if he will keep my words, but if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. What an amazing truth. He will come to abide as a permanent resident. Now, I don't know if you, if you're a big math fan, um, but here's a little formula for you. Just write out this verse. If you love me and keep my words, love plus our obedience to God, love for God plus our obedience to God equals him abiding with us. And I don't know about you, but I want God to abide with me. What an amazing thing that God would come and dwell with us. Now look over, if you will, just right across the page to John chapter 15, verse number seven. Uh, an amazing thing, just a side note about God abiding with us. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. What an amazing promise of God for him coming and dwelling and abiding with us. Um, if you will go uh, over to Ephesians chapter number three and we'll look at a couple verses there. Ephesians chapter number three. I gotta make sure I'm doing good on time here. Yeah, I got plenty of time. We're doing great. Um, Ephesians chapter number three and we'll look at starting in verse number 16. It says that he would grant you, talking about Jesus Christ, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being, remember we just saw that word, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to, it's not only to comprehend all those things, but to know, verse number 19, the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Wow, what an amazing, amazing truth. Uh, and it says in verse number 20, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or thing, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ, or by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Wow, what an amazing passage of scripture there, that God will dwell in our hearts, that we'd be rooted and grounded in love. Why would he dwell with us? That we'd be rooted and grounded in love, that we can comprehend and know the love of God and be full, filled with all the fullness of God. These are all things God has promised with us if we let him dwell with us, that we let him abide with us. The next thing here is the love of Christ. God has promised us the love of Christ with passeth knowledge. Uh, we just read that verse in verse 19. And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. It goes beyond, it transcends even our knowledge that, the, the love, that we have a love of Christ. Romans chapter number eight, if you can flip over there, over there really quickly. Romans chapter number eight, verses 35 through 39. One of my favorite passages in the Bible. Romans chapter eight, verses 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Verse number 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God has promised us his love, the love of Jesus Christ. And he demonstrated his love by coming and dying for us. God commendeth his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, not only the love of Christ was past his knowledge, but the joy of Jesus Christ. The joy of Jesus Christ. John chapter number 15, verse number 11. John 15, 11. It says, uh, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. And this is right after we were just reading about, if you abide in me, my words abide in you, 
a couple verses down, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. What an amazing promise that God has given us that he would give us the joy of Jesus Christ. It's joy that remains, joys that's full, delighting and rejoicing based on Christ uh, and what he's done for us. Not just the worldly happiness that sometimes we can get going to an amusement park or something, man, we're having lots of fun because that happiness is based on circumstances and it can leave just as quickly as it came. But this joy is joy that remains and it's joy that is full and it's based on what Christ has done for us. And next, the, the last thing that God's promised us here, definitely not the last thing he's promised us in the word of God, but just what we're looking at this morning, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Philippians 4, 7. Uh, let's go over as we flip over there. You can have the peace of God when you have peace with God. You've already got peace with God, and now you can have the peace of God turning over our and committing our anxieties, our cares, our burdens. And whenever we do that, God gives us peace. Uh, Philippians chapter number four, uh, verse number seven. Philippians 4, 7 says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What an amazing promise that God's given to us. I, I, I I'm not so naive to think that, I mean, you guys are 13 to, to 18, maybe even 19 years old. Um, you've had things happen in your life that you have anxieties, you have cares, you have burdens as teenagers that you're carrying, whether with school right now, family situations, whatever it might be, just maybe what the future holds. But if you have, if you're saved, you can have the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. And we're supposed to cast our cares on the Lord because he careth for us. And so what an amazing thing that God has promised to us. Now let's look at what, 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 do you, what did you do to get saved? Hopefully, like we already talked about that, that you've been saved. But what did you do to get saved? You called upon the name of the Lord. Uh, let's look at Romans chapter number 10. We'll be uh, there for quite a bit of time. Um, so you can just hold your place there once you get there. Romans chapter number 10. In verse number 13, this would be a good place maybe to, to mark in your Bible if you're going to be out soul winning and you can keep this, this uh, passage very close and, and easy to get to. Um, you called upon the name of the Lord. You called on his name. You addressed God. You confessed that, that you were a sinner. It says in verse number 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's important who you're calling on. You can come into me and say, hey, I want you to forgive me of my sin and take me to heaven. I can't do anything for you. I'm sorry. But if you call on God and you address God and you go to God about it, man, what a work God can do in your life. All those things he promised can apply to you. What did you do? You called upon the name of the Lord. The next thing is you believed in your heart. Uh, look at verse number nine, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You confessed, I mean, that word just means the same word. You have the same word as somebody else. You agreed with, with God about your condition and the consequences of, the, of, that, of your condition, that you are lost, that you are headed for a lake of fire. All those things we talked about who you were at the very, very beginning. You confess that Jesus is Lord and you believe that he's alive, that God hath raised him from the dead. That's what that verse is saying. So you believe in your heart, those things you confess with God, you believe. And uh, the next thing is that you receive him. What an amazing thing. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a whosoever salvation. Uh, John 1, 12, you can keep your place there in Romans and uh, go over to John chapter number one. Um, it's actually our memory verse for, for this week. Hopefully you'll have it down by next week. Uh, one of the first verses I, I memorized, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Very powerful passage right there. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You've received Jesus Christ. You believe on his name, you receive him, and you become the sons of God. Uh, and a lot of these things, it's not necessarily like this happens, you wait five years, this happens. It's an instantaneous deal. The next thing here is you repented of your sins. Uh, if you look down at the bottom there, it gives some words to explain um, and some definitions there. Um, and the repentance is just a change of attitude resulting in a change of action about sin. To change the mind is what that word means. Uh, we don't have time to go to it, but the prodigal son in Luke 15, he went his own way, then he repented, he had a change of mind, a change of direction, and he returned to the Father. And that's exactly what we do when we get saved. We, we change our ways, we change uh, our mind, what direction we're going, uh, our attitude towards sin, and it changes our action towards that as well. And we repent of our sins, um, and, and, and we get saved. That's, that's what we do. Uh, so what did God do? Let's look at those things. What did God do? 
Uh, the Bible says, or in Romans chapter number 3, verse 23, let's go over there really quickly. Romans chapter number 3, verses 24. Romans 3, 24. It says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. He has justified me freely. He has made me free. Because of that consequence, it's almost like he took, we were on our way to, to jail, to prison, so to speak, spiritually, and God came by and, and, and he pardoned us. He justified us. He made us free. He took those, those handcuffs off us, the shackles off of our feet, and we were made free and we were justified um, to be declared as not guilty, just as if I'd never sinned, somebody said, but to be declared as not guilty. Before, we were already condemned. We, there wasn't anything necessarily we had to do. We were already condemned um, to, to, to face the consequences of our sin, but Jesus Christ justified us. God justified me freely. Uh, we're declared not guilty freely and fully. When God looks at, at me and when God looks at you, he doesn't see a sinner, but he sees the blood of Christ. And why is the blood of Christ important? It's because the blood of Christ is the payment for my sin. Uh, the next thing is, uh, we're going to try to roll through these, but man, these are good stuff. You can go back and study these. I encourage you to really go back and look over these verses. Um, go to Revelation chapter number one, verse number five, because what did God do? He washed me from my sins. Um, hopefully you put your clothes in the washer at least like, I don't know, once a week or once every two weeks um, after they start stinking really bad. Uh, but when you put them in there, they come out different than whenever they went in. And that's exactly with us. Um, and and the, God's uh, washing that he does in our soul, in our hearts, it's better than any like Tide stick you can use or a, or a correction thing that if you get a stain on there, uh, man, God completely cleans us. He makes us clean and all of our sins are gone. Revelation 1 verse number 5. The Bible says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Man, what an amazing thing. We, what did God do? He washed me from my sins. We're completely clean. Not only are we made free, we're made clean. And he talks about the next thing, that he secured my name in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation chapter number 21, since we're still in that book. Revelation 21, verse number 27. The Bible says, and there it shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. God has secured our name in the book of life. Our name is written there and we get to go to heaven. What an amazing truth that that is. Uh, it's not a fairy tale. It's not just something you can dream about or, or think about, but it is a reality that God has secured our name in the Lamb's book of life. It's secured. It's not just uh, there and can be taken out, but it is there permanently. Uh, the Bible says that God also adopted me as a son, as a child of God. In Romans chapter number 8, uh, verses 14 and 15, we'll try to get there really quickly as we're getting to the end today. Uh, Romans chapter number 8, verse number 14, uh, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, uh, heirs of God and joint heirs with, with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also, that we may be also glorified together. We're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God. I was a child of the devil. I, I, was, I was alienated from the family of God by, because of my own condition. He took me in and he made me family. He wanted me to be a part of his family. What an amazing thing. I, we have a, I, my youngest sister, she's 14 years younger than I am, um, so which would be, I'm 23, so I make her about nine right now. Uh, my, my younger sister, Karis, man, we, we got to adopt her. And basically what we did is we went in and uh, in, in different circumstances with, with different adoptions nowadays, but you can go in and basically what we're saying is we want, we want you to be a part of our family. We want you, we, we want you to, to enjoy the things that we enjoy and we bring you into the family. And that's exactly what God did to us. He adopted us as a son or a child of God. Um, he accepted me in the beloved or beloved. Uh, Ephesians chapter number uh, one, verse number six. Let's see if we can get over there really, really quickly. Ephesians chapter number one, verse number six, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now the word beloved means, uh, or let's see, accepted is, is to be kindly received, not refused. The, the beloved means greatly loved, dear to the heart. And God has accepted us in that group that he greatly loves, dear to his heart. 
What an amazing truth there that we have been accepted. We're, God didn't reject us. He didn't cast us away. We didn't come to him for salvation. He said, no, you've, you've sinned too much, but he accepted us. His blood was sufficient to cover us and he accepted us in his beloved. Let's look at the next one here. Uh, letter F is, he sanctified me. What did God do? He sanctified me. What does that mean? He made me holy. Uh, think of it, H-O-L-Y, holy unto him. But he also made me holy for him, W-H-O-L-L-Y. He made me holy and also holy, separated to him, holy, special for God. And that's what God did for us. That's what he did when it says that he sanctified us. He set us apart by God and for God. What an amazing truth. That that's what God did for us. He wants to use us. He wants us to be set apart for him, uh, to, to be a testament of his grace. And the last thing he did here is he made me a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This is a great passage of scripture. Uh, we might just be able to read just this first verse or the verse there, verse number 17. But I encourage you, go back and look at that, that passage of 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Uh, it's, a, it's a great chapter. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. When something is a new creature, it, it's different. It is. Now, I think about from the, the improvements that God made whenever he first made man, he took from man and made a woman. What, what an amazing, they're actually beautiful to look at. I haven't seen a guy that I, that I think is beautiful to look at, right? Hopefully you haven't either. Uh, but God made us a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. Notice this is something God did. This isn't something that I did, but this is something that God did, that God made me a new creature. Would God only do something 50%? And this is kind of where we'll get the application and end at today. But would God only do something 50%? Would he make me a new creature and be like, oh, yeah, well, God, God gave me this desire to serve him. But also, you know, I kind of still like to do the, the same things I used to do. I still have my worldly tendencies, my worldly nature. And so, you know, but God made us a new creature 100%. Uh, I, I kind of think about, you probably heard the illustration before of a caterpillar and a butterfly. And, and the transformation that, that happens uh, in, in that animal's life, but it starts out as a caterpillar, just crawls around everywhere, um, it eats everything, uh, doesn't really care about anything else, uh, it's kind of just selfish, you know? Um, and then now don't go like find a caterpillar and like pick it up and start chewing it out or something because it's just, a, it's just an animal, but uh, it might be fun to do, I don't know. And then it like gets into a cocoon and goes in there for a little while and then eventually it comes out and it becomes a squirrel. I mean, I mean a butterfly, no. <laughs> uh, but it turns into a butterfly and the butterfly flies. Uh, that'd be kind of a weird name if it was called a butterfly and then it didn't fly, but whatever. Uh, but do they have the same characteristics between the butterfly and the caterpillar? No. Uh, do they have the same purpose in life? I mean, the one just eats and eats and eats everything kind of destructive. And then the butterfly, it flies around and it helps pollinate, cross-pollinate the plants. And uh, man, what an amazing purpose a butterfly has. And if we didn't have them, what our uh, plant life and stuff, how that, how that would be affected. Uh, does a butterfly go back into a cocoon and turn back into a, a caterpillar? It doesn't, that's not what happens. It doesn't do that. Um, and the same thing in our life. If we're a new creature in Christ, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It spreads new growth. That's what a butterfly does. We were just talking about that. And it has a vital role in that. And the same thing with us spiritually. And I'll kind of wrap it up with this. Our, our life spiritually, now that we're saved, hopefully if you aren't saved, you'll talk to somebody today and get that settled and get, and get your salvation uh, taken care of. But if you're saved, God has a purpose for your life. He wants you to grow. God wants you to, you have a vital role. Each one of you, you have a vital role in, in growing not only yourself, but also other Christians. And so uh, a, couple, a couple things just to end up here. Our, re our reading assignment is to begin reading through the gospel according to John. It's the fourth book in the New Testament. Um, so you can read a chapter a day, or if you want to read a couple chapters a day, keep doing that and don't stop until you finish the, the entire book. It's, it's only got a couple chapters in there, um, but it'll be a blessing to you. So don't just start something and then, fin and then, and then quit. Get in there, start reading that, and uh, let God speak to your heart. And then memorize John 1, 1 through tw or John 1, verse number 12. Uh, we read that verse earlier, uh, but memorize that for next week. And then I have a homework assignment for you that's uh, just what I feel like God wants us to do. I want you to write out your testimony of salvation and share it with somebody this week. Even if you want to come up to me and share your testimony with me, uh, I'm going to do this too. I'm going to write out my testimony. I'm not, I'm not necessarily going to go read it to somebody, but I'm going to write out my testimony and then kind of look back on that and think about, you know, this is who I was. This is what God promised me with salvation. This is what I did. And this is what God did. God did all these things for me. And hopefully by the end of this, 
Hopefully your heart is very thankful at this point. Hopefully it's very grateful and you can look to God and say, God, thank you for everything you've done for me. I know I didn't deserve it, but your grace, man, what an amazing salvation that you gave to me. And it will motivate you because you are saved to go tell somebody else. I mean, after looking at all these things, how could we keep this gospel to ourselves? How could we hide this, this, this light under a, uh, under a bushel? No, we're not going to do that. We're going to let God's uh, life that he's given to us shine. So write out your testimony of salvation. Share it with somebody this week. If you want to hear my testimony, come. I don't know if you can necessarily come talk to me in a huge group, uh, but call me and just say, hey, I want to share my testimony with you. Will you share your testimony with me? And I'll be very, very happy to do that. So um, thank you for joining us today, whether you're a visitor, whether you're t uh, a regular in teen class. Uh, I, I had fun. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Um, but the Christian life, salvation is the beginning point. It's not an ending point, but it is just the, the, the foundation that we build on. Uh, so let's go ahead and go, Lord, in prayer, and then, uh, and then we'll wrap up today. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all you've done for us, Lord. Just thank you for the opportunity to look at your word and just the encouragement it is to me, Lord. Just as we go out, we see people that don't have any hope. God, they're lost. God, they're on their way to Lake of Fire. And God, what an amazing salvation you've given to us. How dare we not share that with somebody else? And also, as you made us a new creature, Lord, help us not to go back to our, the ways of our flesh, the ways of the world, but God, that we would be dedicated and focused and committed to living our life for you. Thank you so much for all you've done for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next week.